Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, February 27th meeting of the Conway Select Board. And at 6.30, the agenda doesn't clearly state so, um, it will become joint meeting. Joint meeting. Down. Uh, the title, yeah, um, yeah, um, but yeah, at 6 30, this will become a joint meeting with the finance committee. Um, it is being videotaped for your, your viewing pleasure. If at any time the camera ceases to function or the owl ceases to function, the meeting will continue live and in person. Uh, call the meeting to order. First item vote to approve the minutes of February 20th, 2024. Looked over them, they look good to me. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for February 20th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Three warrants. Um, I reviewed all these, several of them I reviewed yesterday. Um, the, the accounts payable warrant, the amount of $141,008.19. Payroll warrant, the amount of $137,000. $620.20 and a payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $34,255.60. I move to approve the warrants. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings attended by select board members? Uh, none for me. None since last week. All right, I had a uh, long meeting with the uh, Age in place, mass in motion, working group, and the Council of Aging all focused on concerns about, um, not concern, well, concerns and issues that they've identified that need to be resolved um, for if Count Conway were to join the South County Senior Center as formal members. And um, uh, it was actually improved. I, First of all, Veronique went to this Council of Aging meeting earlier, a couple days before that, and <coughs> wrote, wrote a very, um, very, a very good analysis of what their concerns were. And then, to me, they amplified those concerns and added a couple other ones. But I did want to say that the the quality of their analysis was 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 pretty good, and the the issues that they identified are legit and do need to be resolved. Um, and I see Jennifer send out a whole bunch of emails right to try to make as a first step to making that happen. But um, so there's that. And then um, Saturday, I had a meeting with our state senator Paul Mark. Oh, we, nice. We met at Brand Euphoria, Euphoria for a slice of pizza because uh, he was on his way back, and it was um, issues regarding permissible usages of the 1.245 million whatever, because I was not able to talk to him Friday when I reached out, so I did talk to him about it Saturday. Um, um, public comments, you're here for that. Do you want to wait until we, I don't know, I don't know, do you want to speak about something now? Or do you, um, do you want to I have a commitment at 6.30, which I can maybe postpone for a half hour or so, but yeah, I would like to say a couple words now. Sure. Um, um, as you all know, I, I've been very involved in following the situation with the roads and the um, storm damage and that kind of stuff. And I, am, I continue to be very concerned about the town's response to that. I think there have been some really good steps that have been taken. Um, I wanted to commend you for setting up this uh, structure where you have the head of the highway department come and present to you on a regular basis, because uh, my read on things is that communication has been a pretty significant issue. Um, and I guess I, I just wanted to also express um, my concerns about the department head, um, who's here with us, Ron, I see you over there. Um, I, I see Ron as being an incredibly dedicated town employee. Um, extremely hard working um, but I have lost confidence in him in his ability to perform effectively in the position of a department head I just see a lot of um, things that are troubling to me I, I watched the most recent uh, select board meeting last week and a lot of that was on display 
Um, I think a department head has to have a very specific skill set that requires interpersonal skills, um, critical thinking skills, and hearing Ron describe how he was confused and being a little bit argumentative at certain points and kind of fear-mongering a little bit about what would, the road the town would go down if we tried to help some of these property owners, it was quite alarming to me. And I also found it stunning that he had not read this report that uh, Veronique had commissioned on behalf of the town. I don't know if that situation has changed at all, but the last time I was here for a meeting, Ron had freely admitted that he had not read that document. So I don't know what that's about. Um, Veronique, maybe you have information about that, but um, to me, it's inexcusable that a department head would not have really studied that carefully. And then actions that Ron had taken subsequent to that report, two months after that report, were in direct uh, contra contra contravention of what the re very sound recommendations were made in the report. So I just felt as a citizen, as a taxpayer, I I've been carrying this on my heart for quite a while. I'm concerned about this. I'm concerned about Ron because to me, he shows a lot of signs of just being overwhelmed. And maybe his answer is just to work harder, but that's not gonna solve this problem. We're, we're in, a, in an environmental situation now, in, in a political situation, in a financial situation, where we really need someone with those critical administrative skills in order to help us all work together. I even, you know, in the last meeting, I even saw on display a really worrisome sort of psychological phenomenon, which we refer to as splitting, where, you know, the select board should present a united front, right, in terms of these interactions. But it felt like some splitting was occurring where some people were taking Ron's side and other people were kind of doing the hard work of giving feedback or, you know, trying to give guidance. Um, the meeting prior to last week, you guys discussed this concept, which I thought was very reasonable, about the select board being responsible for um, strategic activity, mm -hmm. and the department head and the highway department being responsible for tactical activity. So I, I think from what I know of Ron, I know that he is a superb uh, operator of this heavy equipment. He knows how to repair roads. But um, I don't think it's fair to him to continue to lay these job expectations on him and just cause him to be more and more frustrated and unhappy. And, you know, it worries me. I just wanted to, I know it's like a very sharp opinion that I'm expressing, but um, and I, uh, I felt a little bit hesitant about saying it, but, but I, I think someone has to talk about this openly. So I don't know what the solution is, <laughs> um, but like I say, I don't, I don't think it's really fair to Ron to con continue to ask him to do this job, which I don't think he has the skill set to do. So do we want to take this and go right into unfinished business, which is the same subject? Um, actually, it's new. It's on. It's on. It's on new business. But yeah. Well, actually, it's unfinished business too. It's unfinished business right. and new business. Yeah. Sure. So, you know, I mean, any any public comic, any civic involvement, um, whether that's praise or constructive criticism, is uh, obviously always welcomed here. Um, I agree. I think that in the in the terms, I think Ron is overworked and understaffed um, in part uh, because of some of the failures of this committee on how we could maybe look into um, the pay rates of some of our town employees and to include uh, the highway employees as well. Um, I also, you know, <laughs> 
I also want want to put out there that there, I agree that we, there was some um, we weren't on a unified front, but that's why we have a three-person committee. Um, sometimes we're not going to agree on uh, the process to move forward with, especially in such a complex um, scenario. Uh, I I personally feel that more um, expert opinions are required before we take action on some of the issues that were caused by the major flooding to include uh, Baptist Hill, um, Shelburne, um, Emerson Hollow, which are all part of basically one major issue. Um, that is the area we've been trying to focus on. Uh, you know, as we talked before when I saw you on the walk, um, I, I think the FERCOG assessment was a very good assessment for the time that they took on it and the qualified people that they had to do the assessment, I just feel it wasn't thorough enough and it didn't involve um, Emerson Hollow, as we stated, or Shelburne, which are issues that are related to Baptist. And what we're discussing later today um, and Veronique's uh, updates are about how we should proceed forward with potential grant applications to have a hydraulic engineer study, which I think would be very helpful before we spend the money on fixing uh, uh, Baptist, because um, I don't want to spend money on something that isn't fixed properly, and then we have to go back and, and, and redo it again. Um, but I do agree that, you know, Ron's overworked, he's understaffed, it's something that I, I think it's not his problem alone and was not caused by him alone. I think it was, a, that's where we are kind of unified <laughs> in, in, in that we need to do better on our part to help him um, not only staff properly, but to offer direction in what we want um, going forward with how we're supposed to manage uh, the water management issue and. Uh, fixing these roads. So, I mean, I, I agree with most of that. I, I do think that the issue of um, us being at fault for not paying more, there is truth to that, but there is also a whole other aspect of it, too, that, um, you know, and, and that I would ask you to do your own independent investigation. And uh, you know, I have the contact numbers of employees that recently quit, and I would ask you to call them up, like I have, because I'm all, when, when somebody quits town employment, I'm always interested in feedback, and we don't have a formal exit interview policy, and I've always taken it upon myself to reach out to them and thank them for working and find out, you know, why. And the answer has never come. The compensation has never been an issue. Um, and I'll leave it at that. But um, I, I know that's what we're told. But um, that's not what they say. I, I'm also basing it on, I have seen the pay rate scale between other towns. And I'm not talking about um, <clears throat> outside of, uh, you know, uh, corporations. Obviously, we're not going to be able to compete um, anymore, but I do know that there is, not only with the highway department, but with, you know, town admin, with transfer station employees, like we discussed last week, um, we're always at or near the bottom, which is unfortunate. But I do agree, like, there should, I, I'm surprised to hear there's no exit interview. We now have the personnel committee. <laughs> yeah, that's so. something we should bring up to them for sure. Um, and yeah, the you know, the, and you know, I, I, my, I, a, a month ago, I asked, you know, some, somebody was talking to me about wanting to apply. I encouraged them to apply. I, I brought this up last week that they had never heard back. Mm -hmm. And Ron was sitting there and he said, oh, you know, I'll, I'll get on that. And I just ran into that person today 
they still haven't been contacted. And I'm, I'm not, if they don't fit, the whatever, whatever, but they're Conway residents. They haven't been, it's been five weeks since they applied. And when that person comes to town meeting, how do you think they're gonna vote? How do you think they're gonna vote? It's like. So can I say something on that? Sure. So is, is there a policy change with people applying that aren't qualified for a position? I don't understand because we've never reached out to people that apply for a position that's not the position that's open. You've never, when people apply and you don't accept them as a new employee or want to interview them, you've never contacted them and told them, thanks for your application, but you don't qualify. No. And well, I'll, I'll put, I'll, it's that, been that way forever because I've applied for town position before and same thing, I got no response. So it's not a new thing. That's I'm, just, in, in the world that I live in, that's just common courtesy and it is done automatically, especially Maybe as, if we had an HR time. department. Now that we have a personnel committee, I think this is another thing I can bring up with them. And just, just those kinds of policies and procedures because a lot of things... It's 30 seconds to pick up the phone and say, got your application, you don't qualify, but thanks, thanks. Maybe, you know, here, here's, here's whatever. You don't even have, but this, it, it's 30 seconds of common courtesy. They're Conway voters. You're asking them to, at town meeting to support what you want to do. That's all part of it. And, and you sat here last week and said, I'll, I'll talk to Veronique about it. We'll take care of it. I think we could add that to the personnel committee to develop an email. Actually, now that I have access to the Employment Association of New England, they have a lot of templates for all this kind of stuff. And I think, as I've told you before, because I have Lori working for me now, helping me get a lot of these things that have been on my wish list for three years, um, you know, personnel files, all of this kind of, all of our policies and procedures, that's, I'm just now in a position to be able to put that all together. So, but that's definitely on my to-do here. Anything else you want to do address about all that, Erica? Well, I just, I, I mean, I still would like some clarification about this report that some people feel we should have directed Ron to implement specifically what the FERPOG suggested we do, that plan that they put together in the fall. My understanding is that there was a caveat with that report was that they said they're not engineers. <laughs> and the select board, like we never, there's there nothing that came out of that report that Ron was specifically instructed to do or that he declined to do or that he refused to do. So I just, I feel like there's kind of a misunderstanding about what, <laughs> You know why work hasn't happened up there, or work work has happened that's been contrary to what was recommended in that report. I mean, I think I've said this before. I think we're all on the same page. We all realize that we need to do something with the flood water management system up on this hill. But I don't think we are in agreement about exactly what needs to happen, what that remedy looks like. I'm not an engineer. I don't feel comfortable giving the highway department instructions about, you know, how they should handle the stormwater. Um, so I think, it, like um, Chris said in Veronique's update, I think there's, there's some very real potential for grant funding and for like a real, you know, hydraulic engineering study so that we can once and for all fix that problem. And I think we all agree that it's a problem <laughs> and we all want to do something about that problem but I don't think it's fair to put that entirely on the highway department and suggest that there's been, you know, a, a refusal to perform work that the select board has agreed upon and directed the highway department to perform. Um, 
comment on that? Sure. So the work that's been done up there hasn't been to correct the problem. It's only been to make it so the residents can drive on the road. Nothing has been done to correct any problems up there. We're not spending money up there. No money's been spent up there to fix the problem because we don't know how to fix the problem yet. Um, that's I'm being told that you know hydraulic engineers are being seeked to um, work with the problem, work with us to make things happen up there. But nothing's been done up there. It, what has been done up there was to so that we could at least try to maintain the road a little bit. The, the blacktop was totally messed up. Not from the storm, just messed up. Yes, the storm did have some damage to it, but it was more of just preparing for work to, that's coming down the road, and so that we could plow it. If I may, um, because it kind of ties into my town administrator update, but as the select board has been discussing the FERC COG report, what I heard, there wasn't a vote on anything that I recall, but what I heard was that there was agreement that um, the next step would be to get an expert in. I think that was mentioned at several meetings. So this is why I have been trying to find grant monies so that we can figure out how to hire that expert to look at the area. Um, if, if the board has a different wish for how I spend my time, then that's, you know, please let me know. Um, but that's why I've been doing all the work I've been doing, trying to find grant money to take care of that. Mm -hmm. Particularly because it's it's kind of a public-private, it's, it's not just how the town manages the water on the roads. There is water coming down through the whole watershed, and the only way to deal with a lot of these issues is to have, um, the only thing you can do with water is slow it down or redirect it. And you want to make sure that if you redirect it, it's not making more problems downstream for somebody else. So it seemed like an opportunity, and there you know, is grant money out there, and hopefully, and this year with the 319, I forgot to mention in my report, there's no match required either. So, so this would be an opportunity for the town to partner with the residents and talk about what, okay, what can the residents do on their property to mitigate water? And then how does the town structure, you know, moving the water from one side to the other based on what residents might be willing to do? So, I mean, I, I can talk more about my update if you want right now, or if you want to do it, what's up I, to you? I think we need timelines. Uh, you know, Eric is saying the same thing. I, I am at least where I, I don't feel comfortable unless a qualified person is telling us. Yes, this will fix it, or no, you should do this instead. Um, this is a large area. There's a lot of homes affected. Mm -hmm. It's gonna cost a ton of money, and we want it done right the first time. So we also can't have that road be unpaved for as long as it's been unpaved and continues. So I think we need a timeline. If we can get the grant, how long will it take? How, how do we feel uh, confident do we feel that we will be accepted? It is a competitive grant. Right. So, so that's the, the thing, like exactly. 50, 50? In all honesty, it, through DEP, one of their requirements is trying to mitigate pollution in the river. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we've talked about is the, the sediment load and also for taking water off of the roadway. If it's on the roadway, it's washing down all kinds of salts and sediments and things and putting it into the river. So by doing this project, we could be cleaning up the river by not having all this pollution go down into... into Is there the another river. source of funding to pay for the, um, the expert outside of the grant if we can't get the grant? Um, I don't know of any offhand. Um, I'm not even sure at the moment how much a hydraulic engineer would cost, but I do know that in this meeting that we just had with GZA Field Geology Services and FERCOG, 
that GZA was going to take another look at it and see if they could add a little bit more data to the FERCOG report to flesh it out for this grant application. Mm -hmm. So, but the timeline, sorry, the timeline is the grant is a two and a half year grant and you can apply for a one time, one year extension. Hopefully that's not how long this would take. But part of the, part of what they were looking at was, or what we were looking at was combining getting the hydraulic engineering data and a design and some permitting. So that would all be part of the process, right? At the same time, getting funding for um, a pamphlet that would explain to homeowners how to do things like create rain gardens, all kinds of different stormwater management projects you can do on your own property, and trying to get funding to help the homeowners to actually do those projects. So, in other words, if the town could come in, if we get this grant, the town could come in and say, okay, we're all partnering together. If you guys can do this, then we can do this as a town. Um, you know, I mean, that would be ideal, and I, my hope is that given the climate with the state, I shouldn't use the word climate, because of climate change, um, there, there's a lot of focus on these kinds of issues, and maybe they would see ours as, you know, kind of a, a model. I, I'm not sure. Um, but the first step that, because the timeline for the grant applying, it's going to be coming out, the RFR is coming out probably in the next couple of weeks. The FERCOG needs to know right up front if the residents in the area would be willing to participate. So they had requested to get a meeting with all the residents as soon as possible to explain this grant application. And because if we put this in, the residents would need to be signing letters of support for that application. So they had requested um, that the board approve having FERCOG and GZA and Field Geology Services come in on March 7th at 6 p.m. to have a meeting with all the residents who were affected. And those are all the people who, you know, I already have on the email list that I sent the FERCOG report to. So, and because that March 7th is, this is the only day you could sort of vote and say that that's true because the next meeting you're not, it's not a regular meeting, and then after that, it's the 11th, so. so. I have a question. Yep, sorry. Why are we writing a grant in order to get more expertise to look at this when we just received over a million dollars from the state? Because the grant uh, money that we receive from the state cannot be spent on private property. So... We have to, that's why I'm trying to find a grant. What do you mean by that private property? That is, that is not, not true. Not true. Well, it depends how you, it depends how you define that. It depends how you define that. I spoke that. with DOR in specific about this project. And when I mentioned the combined public-private, he said no money can be spent on private property. So that's why I'm trying to find a grant which allows you to spend money on private property. <clears throat> that 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 was the discussion that you had with DOR initially with Jane. No, no, that was just uh, yesterday. Is right. it's, is there some possibility that we could spend that? I mean, I understand that, um, that that first and foremost we're supposed to spend that money to repair the storm damage, and if there's any left over, we do have to consult with DOR, basically get their blessing to spend it on something other than that. But is there a possibility we could spend that money on just? The hydraulic, just the, the, the hydraulic engineering. So no, none of the actual yes. work itself, but just the. I don't. I don't think that's a problem. My only concern would be making that decision right away because we've got this grant deadline looming, and we'd need to know to be able to put that in. Additionally, and I don't know how much that would cost. Additionally, the 1.5 million borrow that was authorized in t a town meeting in December specifically included the language to hire engineers. That's back. correct, but um, nothing has been said about actually borrowing any money now that we've got the 1.245. If we paid for the... Um, In other words, we haven't borrowed it. No. If we paid for the engineering study and still applied for the grant, could we repay ourselves if we won the grant? I don't think so. I don't think it works that way. If you put in for a grant application and you're asking for the hydraulic engineering and you did it in the meantime, I think that would just make them look at us like, why did you apply for it then? So, what, when, if we apply for this grant, when would we know whether or not we get it? So, I mean, could we have that? It would be probably the, 
late summer, early fall, I think, because it's pretty much on the same schedule. Well, actually, it might be sooner. The, I believe the RFR comes out in the middle of March, and it's probably due in the middle or end of May. So it's pretty much on the same cycle as MVP. So I'm thinking, and, but they don't often let us know until like July-ish. So may, we might know by that. I'm really concerned though. You know what, let me look and see if I can. Waiting, yeah. waiting all this time because right now the, the, the water situation has changed. When we have a heavy rain, the water comes down through uh, Fitz and Trish's uh, pipe. It now goes along the road, and it goes into this opening that's been made substantially larger than it was previously. Previously, there was a grate on it, which effectively limited how much water it could take. And then the water would go past it, down to Hardick's house, and then would go into Lori Block's property. But right now, all of that water is coming directly down Pine Hill, and it's coming out like a fire hydrant onto my hillside. And it's creating a big ravine there. And then obviously it went down to Phil's property as well and caused an enormous amount of suffering. So it was very clear in the FERCOG report that the solution was to not have drainage go to the people on the south side of Upper Baptist Hill Road. I can quote the, the sentence to you. And that's why I guess I'm I'm upset because it was very clearly pointed out in that report. Ron didn't read the report, and he created this solution, which is great for Donna Gilman and her situation, because she doesn't have to deal with it, but it's really bad for my property, because it's gonna cause a lot of erosion there. And I, I'm right on a hill, my house is perched right on that hillside, and I don't wanna see any erosion there. And, uh, and of course, my suffering was really minuscule compared to what Phil had to go through. So, um, yeah, that's the problem I have with this. I, and I think there's more weather events that are on the way. So, I think time is really of the essence. I think there's, this is sort of like a crisis in my mind. Um, I think writing a grant is, it's too, it's too little too late. I think if we have some other mechanism where we can move quickly on that environmental study or engineering study, um, we need to do it. Can we get an estimate of what a hydraulic engineering study would cost? Um, we haven't done that yet? No. <laughs> no. Oh. See, that, that puzzles me. Why? Why, why not? <laughs> if you both have decided, or all have decided, that the FERCOG report was inadequate, which I don't agree with you, but that seems to be the consensus, then why aren't we being more aggressive about doing what needs to be done? I'm not the only town person who's in, you know is affected by this. A lot of people are. I understand, and that's in all honesty why I gathered the team um, to, to, from GZA, from FERCOG, and Field Geology Services, people who've known that river for decades and worked with it, to talk to them and ask them what they thought the best approach was. And that's I've been working since then on trying to figure out what kind of money we could we would need and, and what would be involved. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't got to the point of how much would the hydrology engineering come into play. And as I said, the FERCOG was asking if the board wanted to go forward with the grant, then you know we can I guess I guess you're gonna have to decide which, you know, if you want me to continue with the grants or or look at something else. I mean, to, to me, that they're, they're proposing a meeting in a couple of weeks. That's a no-brainer. We should take that meeting. But um, to, for next week, right? Next week, right. so, that's, yeah. that's like, yeah, that's because you don't, we'll, we'll know more after that meeting than we do right now. Yeah. And knowledge is power. But yeah. um, the, the, there's, the, the one thing that is 100% permissible to do with the 1.2 is, is do stormwater management regarding water that flows on town roads. And all of the water that comes down from Pine Hill comes across Upper Baptist Hill Road. Absolutely. That money can be 100% used for engineering, for stormwater solutions from, for that road, for Pine Hill Road, for Emerson Hollow Road, and for Baptist Hill Road. Shelburne. And Shelburne Falls Road. 
and everything in between. And that is the real critical thing. That's the vast majority of the water that is at issue. Um, and, um, you know, my, my, my thing is that I, the, the resistance that we've had for, that, that, that Ron has displayed when these things have come up. I, you know, I, I, I remember him sitting here like, you know, the, when this topic comes up and his comments are like, oh, you want me to be a city, a city, you, you, you want me to be a big city department. And I remember the, the, the walk, the, the, the our, our visit, our site visit, walking up, it, you know, when, when you're asking, you know, did, did you go and examine where the water went to now that you redirected it? And he said, no, it's private property. But, uh, you know, and that's not any... Well, wait a minute, like, like, We have to have, like, you as, like, a, a willing participant, Ron. And, it, you know, and, and it is private property, but it's also a 30-second search on the Registry of Deeds to find out who the owner of that property is. And it's a one-page form that Veronique recently got a copy of from the way that the state does it, because you handed it to my next-door neighbor. Um, the permission to enter property for the purposes of... Oh, that of was given to me by DOT. I had nothing right. to do with that. All I, I did was I know. hand it to them. I know, but you saw how simple that process is to get permission to go onto the property for water, stormwater purposes. And that it's really not an acceptable excuse to say, no, we're not going to care about that because it's private, private property right. and because one time when I did it without asking, somebody yelled at me. Like, it's just, you know... Either you're... But I didn't redirect any water. I don't understand. This is... Sorry. Um, I did not redirect any water on that road. Plain and simple. That pipe that we put in, all that's doing is controlling the water so it's not washing the road out. I didn't say it wasn't an issue. All I'm doing is making sure that we can make, keep the road passable. That so water I, always went to that catch basin. The only time that catch basin didn't handle the water was because of leaves. Covering the catch basin and then the water would go farther down, which is what caused a lot of the problems during heavy rain. So I, I get what you're saying, but to me that's sort of a distinction without a difference because when the water goes under the road and out the other end, the south side of it, that the outlet there has been extended and channelized and now comes out with the force of a fire hose, whereas before it was a trickle. Well, um, extending of covert pipe does not create more water. It, no, it, it does not. It, it You've got the same amount of water going in, you're going to have the same amount coming out. But it and it doesn't create force. It went to a different place, and it created new channels. But and that was the property owner that did that. So the, the, it doesn't. It, it whoever did that. These the the. My whole thing is that like that's got to be, that that's got to be something that we care about. And that we can't just wipe our hands of it and say it's private property. That's not our concern. Because. It's water that was on a town road, and now it's in people's so basements. when the property owner does things on their property that is a concern of the town, it, yes, it is. But in that situation, all they did was extend the pipe. It didn't change anything as far as the town. All they were doing was trying to protect their property. Unfortunately, it wasn't done correctly because we didn't have, now we don't have access to that drainage pipe. If that was done correctly, there would have been a structure put in so that we could maintain what we always had. And then the property owner would have to maintain from that point on. And I, you know, and we're, we're, we, so we're, we're, you're like, get, we're getting into the weeds of, of the specific, but my point is like the general, that 
this has to be something that you care about, that, that you want to solve, that, that your job, because of the climate change and the way that rain comes and how what used to be snowstorms in December are now rainstorms where we get six inches of rain in 12 hours. I understand like, what you're saying. Well, all these things, like if, if, if you're not a willing part of the solution, then we're screwed. But you, what you're asking is to take every private land in Conway and deal with this problem. And you don't understand that, that if you do that, this town can't no, afford I'm, I'm not asking that. I'm you asking. are, because if you do it in one no. place, you've got to do it everywhere. And I'm no. sorry, it yeah. ain't fair for it to happen yeah. in one place and not at all what I'm asking. I'm asking that you care that, that you, to observe where the water goes that was on town roads and when it ends up on private property, that you care that to observe, to go and look, to see how it's flowing, to see what it's doing, and to see what the consequences of that action is. That's what I'm asking. I do care. The, but every landowner has that same issue. They don't want the town water to come onto their property. We, I have, I've been dealing with these issues all over town. So you start going and fixing these problems with town money, you could, the town can't afford what, would, what they're opening up for. The, 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 the place to fix that is when the decision is made to put the, town, the, the water from the town road there. And that was already done when they put the road in to begin with. But that we didn't change where the water's going. And that's the point, you should have. So I'm getting confused as much as Ron is, because we just stated earlier that we think that the problem on your property was caused by another owner diverting water, correct? So... No, the problem on my property is caused by changing the grate on the highway so that it allowed a much larger volume of water. And Ron's saying that's because it, it helps remove the leaves that were blocking the grate in the first place. And that's only been, that pipe's only been in since after December. So anything that happened before that on your property had nothing to do with me putting that pipe in, just so you know. I'm, I'm not sure what the pipe you're referring to is, but. The pipe that we ran down the side of the road from Oh, I see. I see. That's okay. the only thing we've done to that road for controlling water. But that, so, so the thing is, when it rains very hard, that's what you did significantly changes the fluid dynamics of where the water goes. Or Instead is it of, just because there's more water coming off the hill in general? You know, I mean, that's what we have to consider is that new waterways, new pathways were caused by immense flooding, like not just century flooding, millennial flooding. And they're even showing that on the FERCOG report. You know, new waterway, new waterway. And I'm not right. arguing that water that comes off in Casey's property, that that needs to be addressed. I only did what I did was to so it wasn't washing the road out, because like what happened in December, the road got damaged bad because of the water that came off out of her drainage pipe. Yeah, and that needs to be addressed. And I'm, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate or take sides. I'm just trying to show that this is a very complex situation. It is. That, you know, I'm not gonna take the recommendation of the fire department. I'm not gonna take the recommendation of, of the citizens that live on the road, um, even, Ron, I'm not going to take his recommendations to a certain point because we need somebody to come in. It, 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 and if this grant is t too far out, which it sounds like it might be, we should be looking into how much it's going to cost to get an engineer in and come up with a plan like quick. quick. And I, I mean, I, I hear Ron saying that this potentially sets the dangerous precedent if we're going to do this kind of stormwater management and you know, promise one citizen that we're going to keep all, you know, water off of your property. But I think that's not Ron's responsibility to 
that's that's ours is the select board. That's if we strategic part. Right. So if, if we decide to go that route, that's that's not on Ron, that's on us. I also just don't want to pass the problem to somebody else. Right, exactly. You know? Like it, it, like you said, you can't get rid of water, you have to divert it. Right? It has to have a place to flow. Slow so if we're talking measure. if we're saying that the main concern is what's rushing off of Pine Hill, right? Once it rushes off Pine Hill, Upper Baptist is coming down like this, right? So how is that rush off of the Pine Hill Road coming somehow going up? I I don't know. I, I kept on thinking that from what everybody was saying that the triangle by uh, George's place was the main issue and that we should be working on that triangle and getting the flow from that triangle across, can't remember whose property that is. Block. But Lori that's, Block and John. Lori Block, yeah. right? John Crowley. Uh, yeah. and, and that's where there's a drain that we don't, that just, we with don't know. With a tree over it. Right. With yeah. apparently, well, like, but potentially with, a tree over it. With but we can figure that out. Right. The pipe right. that is blocked, the pipe that goes back across the road onto George Horseshoe's property, yeah. which I agree that that's not where the water was totally intended to go, and that was all in the plan to find that pipe blockage and where the pipe was damaged and repair that. That's all been in the plan all along to when we did Upper Baptist and Baptist Hill. Just the, the storms came early. So and, you know, because that was all in the plan for this last year. If we have this meeting on March 7th with the residents and um, the FERCOG and the GZA, is it reasonable to give them a heads up that we'd like to have some ballpark figure for what an engineering Absolutely. study would cost? And one of the things, and I did, I have reached out to Donna Gilman about this, you may recall when she was here with um, her attorney and they made that presentation to us, um, they spoke about their mutual friend that was a municipal hydraulic engineer. And I have reached out, um, plus both times I've seen her in the big Y since then, uh, to bring it up to her that, you know, hook us up. So uh, we're wa I'm waiting on that, but that's... We, we also have to state that, you know, th there's three people on this board. One of them was severely affected. You were severely affected. Of course you guys are going to be more like super passionate about this. I just don't want to make a decision based on um, panic, right? Like this needs to get done now. Um, it, it needs to get done the right way. And it, I can understand the frustration it's taking too long. Like everything else in town is taking too long. Um, but I, if we, I do also think there's a human resources issue that needs to be addressed in terms of needing to have a highway department person who has the skill set to really deal with these complex problems. Um, so that's the less comfortable thing to talk about, but I think it's a real issue. What makes you say I don't have that? Fair question. <laughs> I think I already did speak to that though, Ron. So. For, for for me, you know, that we can we we certainly can have a greater sense. I've said I've thought this since July tenth. We can have a we should and can have a greater sense of urgency with all this stuff, um, and uh, <coughs> and not just for this part of the town. There there the there the other parts of the town that were severely affected. That there there's clusters of them, and that we should we should have been on this. The everything from the die test to the, you know, everything out, there's just a whole lot of incompletes out there. Um, and there, we should be on all this stuff more. With and that's, great, and great. that's on us as well. That's but the other question is if, you know, we're talking about money that's been given to us, fortunately. I think maybe largely through Phil's efforts. I don't know, but. It was, it was a joint, there was a lot of, there was a lot of helping hands. Okay. There was. So, um, but the point is that money can be used for infrastructure. <laughs> It can also be used for human capital. Like, you know, if Ron needs more money so he can hire more help, so he's not completely, no. you know. No. Yeah. <clears throat> not payroll, <coughs> not payroll. But it can be used for storm-related 
projects. Road damage. Storm related projects. Yes. That's and that's really sad because we need more people. But but you know the storm related pro storm related projects including storm stormwater management systems for roads, for town roads. So I, I agree we need more people and that's why I just want to make sure we're controlling rhetoric. All right. Like we're all in a tough situation here. This is like I said, a once in a millennia storm. I thought what has been done so far is pretty impeccable given the work, the amount of people we had to get it done as quickly as it did. It could be better. I, you know, we, we always should aim for better. Um, but, you know, that is one thing that I have to keep saying. We have to be care careful with our rhetoric and what we're saying and, and what we're implying. Um, because we're, there's a handful of people running this town right now, and a handful of people that can fix this issue. So, a lot of pressures on all those people. I don't think we need to apply more pressure, I think we need to help. Just so that I am clear, may I ask the board to vote on what you want me to, if you want me to go ahead and set up this meeting with the fur cause, what? Motion to set up a meeting with the fur cause. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. But can we also talk about like what we can, what Ron might be able to do outside of waiting for the assessment and the, the engineering plan? Yeah, a hundred percent. So can we talk? Can we get back to that triangle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's due up here anyway. Do you, um, do you want to? I don't know. I think that's right. Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Department budget, so. Oh, yeah. Ronald Palooza. Yeah. Great. They've all been waiting. Yeah, that's right. You should say Ronald Palooza. Yeah. It's on the TV. You're alone in the Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Started. Um, I make a motion to commence the finance community jointly with the Honorable Select Board of the Town of Conway. Second. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Roy, do you have a vote for you? Roy, can you hear me? We already have a quorum and we're going to 3 0, so no, no for the record. 3 0 with one, uh, one abstention in the absence. Okay. We already made a vote. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> we commenced the meeting. I right? didn't want to. How'd you vote? We've achieved progress. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Clearly. Yes. Oh, okay. Can you hear us, Roy? I can hear you fine. Okay, we can hear you. Yes. Thank you. My vote was I, not not. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so we're starting with uh, building, public buildings. What's the asterisk at the bottom? What is, what, what are those two numbers? This means as expended as of 11-30-23. The, the, the two of the two items. This is um, the monies that are left over from the building of the highway facility that has been dedicated to the public safety building, correct? And this is left over from the town hall lift design from a while back, wow. which we can use in future. Wow. How do you make sure we don't forget that? Um, that's why I stick it on the omnibus so that it's right there. <laughs> the Just asterisk. like the mosquito. You money. don't forget because of the asterisk. Yeah. 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 
So, I'm so a situation like what we found out earlier with the um, puddle out front of this building, it says maintenance and repairs on here. Would that entail fixing that issue? I. It might. Okay. Depends on how extensive the issue is. Okay. Um, it's got to be looked at to see what's going on. I'm pretty sure the floor is higher than the outside. Uh, no, it's the no. opposite. Yeah. The, the ground is definitely higher than the floor. In the uh, utility room. In this room out here to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but in the vault. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're correct. That, yeah. so the water getting in there. Yeah may not be water, it may be condensation. Right. From, it may not actually be an issue. Right. We, no, we haven't been flooding in that room back there. There's a sump pump back there that, as far as I know, it doesn't work. I mean, it hasn't. I know water pools on the corner over here. That's my concern. It is very damp and musty and smells. Yeah, 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 on the floor, yes. Yeah. But not, yeah. I'm talking on the outside. Like, outside of the building. Yeah, yeah, when it rains, you can see like a six inch deep. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just wondering, okay, so that would be under maintenance and repairs? As long, yeah, unless it becomes a major issue, right? And we'd have to find other. Right. Okay. I mean, a capital budget item versus uh, summer thing. Yeah. Pay to do the physical labor. That's, yeah, if it's a that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. For a town medium to do an article. On. Okay. Thank you. Unless there's some other way of funding it. Okay. So, and the grounds maintenance is mostly the mowing contract? Right? Mostly, yes. So, this, how many years in a row now has it been just one bidder? Three. So, what can we do to get more bidders? I call, I get asked prices. They tell me they don't want to do it. How many do you want me to call? All of them. <laughs> oh, I mean, um, because the only requirement is that they have insurance, right? Or is there what? What are the additional requirements? Would because there's so many landscapers in town, mm -hmm. and in this immediate area, and whenever I run into them, I'm like, "How come you don't bid on a contract?" They're like, "What contract? Oh, you can bid on that." I can tell you, I was rejected by two of them <laughs> to include Snows, who's everywhere, and they told me they want to mow my five-acre property after two years of trying. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> not, not everybody is somebody that you want. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, we've gone through this before where you get a, you hire a contractor and it's more work to get them to show to, up. Well, to get them to do what they're supposed to do yeah. and you have to watch them all the time. It's, it, a reputable contractor is, goes a long way. Sure. Um, and it's 90% of it is the cost of fuel and the labor force. What happened from COVID? I will, uh, we're up now, we're going to be bidding for this year. And I will reach out to a bunch more. Mm -hmm. Can we can you find out from surrounding towns who they use, or are they internal? A lot is internal. Yeah. Um, like Ashfield, who's Ashfield use? I have no idea. I don't know what they mow up there. Wait, he was using the other Smith, the older Smith, Billy Smith, Bill Smith. Mm. I don't think they were. Sheep and goats. Some of with who we're using though, it's like he does a really good job. He spends more time sometimes when things need to be. It's not one of them things where he actually cares about what you know what things look like and but I will reach out to more contractors and it just becomes more work when you get one that's not doing, yeah. trying to do bare minimum. Is there any reason to think that the 
company we're using now might not want to do it again. Uh, I haven't heard from him saying that, but I mean, there's always that possibility. Can we can we just re can we reduce the frequency of requested mowing? Um, you wanna you wanna um, do that with the um, ball field? Ball field? Yeah, everywhere. Like no, I mean you wanna deal with the um, people that do youth league stuff because that's why we do it every twice a week is because of their when they're playing ball. I oh, mean, twice I twice a week, really. During little league season, but then what do you want? You want every every other week? Yeah. And who's going to handle the complaints? Move them to the select board. Yep. When yeah, hundred percent. Put that on us. Hundred percent. So does the select board want to handle the bidding and all that stuff? And because that sounds like you're. No, it's just that that's the, the the increase in the cost of this con of that contract has just Double. F far outpaced like mm -hmm. in w whatever, and so not not everything, not anything. Everything no. is pretty much double. But it's you know it, it's how can we save when we can how can we save? And I think par part of that is instead of perfectly manicured, you know. Uh, AstroTurf kind of mowing, then you know you, you can have you can so the ground ball can slow down a little bit before it gets first base. So That's can okay. I bring the contract to the select board and have them See that rewrite it? Because this, it's, this is not necessary. It's a, it's a simple question about can you can you switch to, to, to every other week from from week? That would just be adding the word other before the after the word. Every. What about during Little League when it's every twice a week? What do you do with that? Take it out and have it every every other week? So the ball field is, I'm asking, I'm not. I, you know, it, you, uh, leave that up to your professional discretion, but just to try to find ways to save us money on things like this. That's what I'm saying. And you don't think I do? So, I'm, um, I, so, so currently it's being cut twice a week during from April, or when mowing starts, till the middle part of June. Okay, so let's just ask the guy, just say, I've been told from the select board that now this has to be once every other week. Um, so the rate should obviously come down and then any complaints can come to us from the, the uh, parents, or if that's too extreme once a week, whatever. I, but you know, I, I I know that the 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 the, com the complaints that we get are overwhelming about they're cutting dead grass. It's clouds of dust and dirt that they're kicking up. There's no living grass. They're running mowers over grass that they can see that, it, and that the mower doesn't touch it. And that was still two years ago. Last year, that did not happen. That's correct. So that's my point. Is when you do a contract, and I didn't write this contract, this was written by the Parks and Rec years ago, because that's what they wanted the field to be like. So when you get a summer that is wet, green, that field grows really fast, and it becomes almost not playable. That's why Little League wants it mowed every two weeks, I mean twice a week, so that they can play on the field. I'm, I'm fine if you, if you are willing to take the... Let's do every week, not every other week. Yeah. yeah. See how that goes. If we get complaints, we can reassess it. That's, I don't care how fast the grass is growing, that is no more than an, that's a half an inch to an inch of growth. In, the difference between twice a week and, and once a week. That's not a significant, if anything, it'll keep more kids from getting hurt. The ground ball will slow down just a little bit and they won't have the odd bounce. And I think another kid's always. <laughs> so I should, I should report to Jan because this would involve Jan yeah, goats. as well, yeah. right? Goats. This is the chair of Parks and Rec. So <laughs> I should report to her that the board has said it, the ball field will be mowed once a week. 
So what do you want me to do as far as my um, dollar amount for grounds maintenance? And that isn't totally everything that, um, I know. it's yeah. not totally everything for the mowing, but. Can't you just keep it as is? And then if there's a surplus, there's a surplus? Well, we're better off if we can, if to the extent, anything you can take off of that, you can. I mean, if, if you switch from air, from twice a week to once a week, what would? What I have would, no idea. Mm -hmm. I haven't got prices for this year, so. Mm -hmm. Maybe the money saved can be used to clean up that mess. <laughs> So we have to come back to us with uh, with some feedback, maybe uh, sometime in another few weeks. If, you know, what goes on? I mean, even if we could take four, you know, that's how that's how you save money: is little bits at a time mm -hmm. in a budget. You know, four grand here, five grand there, or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's how. Oh, I know. I uh, and some of my mm -hmm. issues right now with like the electricity really? because the of the new building highway mm -hmm. garage, it still hasn't fully know where where we're running for money um so uh, i'm okay, i'm pretty sure i'm okay with the dollar amount for this year but in the last week uh, last month the bills took a pretty good jump and you say let's see what we're doing okay with the fuel propane so far too so um, maintenance and repairs um, that's a big variable oh. do we have a, a negotiated contract for heating fuel that's why there's nothing that's for the expense line for me is that, how does that there's I'm nothing sorry. for the Heating fuel line year-to-date budget-wise for heating fuel. Third oh, line for down. expended. I there would have been nothing spent at that point. Oh. But wow. by the thirtieth of November, there was oh, okay. nothing had been paid by that point. You know, Mike just came out with the uh, year-to-date expenditures. I think through December. Or I January, think we've gotten January. it through the end of February. End of February, he oh, just February. sent out. Right. Um, I just haven't had time to update. Yeah, but it will be good to have me. Uh, I see, because the year before we overspent. So in in a lot of ways, it it's almost doesn't make sense for me to be doing what's been expended year to date because a lot of times things happen at the very end of the year or the very beginning of yeah. the year. So it doesn't give you a real picture of well, heating right fuel. I mean, by by the end of March, the heating fuel season is starting to starting to wind down. Yeah. yeah. One thing we should be able to see climate yeah, change, climate change wonder, dividend. Well, one makes me wonder I mean, with the. Uh, Got to be a lot of heating fuel hanging around on the racks these days. <laughs> well, that's all going to change shortly. The heating fuel, because when the new public safety building gets done, that's getting converted to propane. Oh, cool. Quick, thank you. Oh, yeah. Did you want to mention, since we're talking public buildings, about today's meeting? Oh. Just that we had a um, pre bid meeting with contractors for the public safety building. They were contractors that we actually had six. Ooh. Actually, I think it was only five because one week it was two. It was six. One. She counted and there was two oh, from one, so it was seven, and it, so it was actually six. six. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, was a good sign. Mm -hmm. Doubters. Yeah. There were doubters. There were doubters. Yeah. So the next um, phase is they have to get any questions they didn't get answered today have to be in by the 7th, and then the bids have to be in by March 20th. Then the Public Buildings Committee is going to need to review the bids between the 21st and the 29th and bring it to the select board. So that's kind of the, those are estimated dates, but that's our timeline for now. You see, that building will add more money to a budget mm -hmm. because it's more more things to take care of. Mm -hmm. So if you want to knock that grounds maintenance down four grand, yep. make it work. Okay. Ooh.
level funded looked looked good. This even looks better. Just because we lowered it doesn't mean the contractor is going to bid any lower right now. So there's an explanation down here I can roll down to, but here is the budget. Well, since we're starting on salaries, Ron, you want me to just scroll down to the salary explanation? Might as well, because that's where all the um, increases. <laughs> yes. So at last night's meeting with the personnel board, I presented um, pay increases based on, we did a survey of local, well, Western Mass, um, Berkshire County, some Franklin County. Um, and basically what them numbers represent is an average of what, um, is out there for town employees. Um, so just to compare here, this one, the CDL is, is it 2380 right now? Yes. Yeah. And the laborer, is that the, labor, the same? That one is um, 1940. It ranges, right, depending on the license from 1940 to 2144 an hour. We have, a, we, all, we have an employee now that is a, a laborer that is 21, yes, 2140-something. Yep. Um, we've been in talks, and he was looking to get his CDL. So that's why um, there's... The CDL operators is for four CDL. Uh, the dollar amount is for four CDL operators. Um, one laborer, which is a combined um, building and um, grounds and highway. What's the spread between current and proposed in each of those categories? What's that? What's the spread between current and no, the, not, the not Delta. Yeah, the percentage increase. What's the what? Yeah, what's the what's the percentage increase and in the yeah. spread between each of those categories, present and proposed? You're showing me the overall number. Yes. I'm asking for the spread for each of those categories. From what it was. Correct. To what it is now. Correct. Well, I have the hourlies, but that's because I do have hourly up there. I just don't have the grand total. So right now, superintendent salary is seventy three one oh five with no overtime. The CDL operator is twenty three eighty, which can we scroll back down? Yep, yeah, so 79 is the increase for a superintendent. And then the CDL operator goes from 20, 2380 to $27. The laborer, um, actually I don't have his, it's 19 something that he's currently making. And that goes to 21. How many hours of work? How many hours a week do you work? 40 hours. That's how many hours do I work? Do you, do you actually work? Not are you competent? How many hours do you actually work? 
typically between 60 and 80. Yeah. Because I noticed that little part, you have nobody's mentioned, the little part with overtime after 45 hours. Right now, right now, then, right now you are managerial w without overtime. You were 80 hours a week. Do the math. But that's, the overtime is for winter time. The overtime is for the hours spent in winter time. What's the because I don't have what is it time and a half? Hmm? Time and a half. Which is reflected in the winter budget. Nine nine percent of the time my overtime I've never been Never been compensated, but never been concerned. I have, over the years, asked for overtime for winter. I had one year that I was given a bonus, and then it was supposed to be brought up at the following year, and for some reason that never happened. I even know I was asking not to select for it, but I'm um, afraid it would close not fair any. Um, and they kept putting it off, and I should have done what I did in the first place, but whatever. Um, so it's been, I don't have the option. I have to, we don't, even with all the help that we have to maintain our roads in the wintertime, I need to plow. You know, I need to be out there. Actually, um, if I may, the spreadsheet that, that Ron brought into the meeting last night had a lot of interesting information about, you know, whether or not they, they had overtime after a certain number of hours, et cetera. And then the personnel committee directed me to look up certain information. So just today I've gotten, I didn't realize how many Iowa superintendents had contracts for one thing. So there's a lot of, that have contracts out there. There are a lot that actually do get paid overtime after a certain number of hours. So. There will be a lot more information that the personnel committee will have. The personnel committee's recommendation that are, are just pure recommendations. They're not binding. They're particularly poorly informed about town budget in general, about the, what a town is willing to bear. And um, they're really not, I mean, okay, I'll listen, but um, they're not deserving of deference in any way. And. This is something you've been pushing for for a long time. Overtime for for Ron. You have been for the summer. She was pushing for this from the start, starting in July, for you know, the, and you do work oh, a that's ton of hours. That's, you do that's work a, a ton of hours. Separate issue. I have, yeah. But but my thing is this is this is dishonest budgeting. It is. You're keeping, you're keeping the salary for Ron on the proposed budget at 79, which is in and of itself, but the, the overtime that you were proposing if at, at a 60, so if 60 to 80, call it 70, call it 25 hours per week of overtime that you were not putting in the budget. That's, That's di not what I said. The overtime would be in winter time. But you work that amount all year round. I see you in there Saturdays and Sundays all the time. That is my choice. I don't have an issue. Like I said, I've never asked for... I. That's my choice that I'm doing that. I'm not looking to be compensated for things that I do because I love this town. I'm, but when it comes to things that I have to do... Like plowing in the winter because you're understaffed. Correct. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so Is can I uh, interrupt here? Sure. Um, so why don't you just uh, give us an estimate of, uh, are you able to roughly estimate how many hours of overtime uh, in the winter that you, would, that, you, that you would incur? Yes, I have it on my winter budget. Do you want me to go to snow and ice? 
Or do you want to finish highlighting? Well, I just want to say with the personal document, we're looking at the job description for the highway superintendent, and we're looking at sample contracts that are out there so we can figure out some next steps. But if you did, so my, my, my whole thing with the FERCOG salary survey is that you can spin that data to justify any argument you want to make with the amount of variables from town to town. Everything from co-pays and your insurance to uh, working, to all kinds of things. That, the FERCOG study is always used by employees who want more money I did not use And I, I'm not saying you did. I know you did, um, actually. But on your behalf, by people who are asking, making that request on your behalf. Um, and you can use that same study to justify a pay decrease if you look hard enough and you compare populations, you, com you compare, um, you know, wealth, relative wealth of a town, et cetera, et cetera. That study doesn't mean anything. It never has. Mm. It it's means whatever you want it to mean. Like any good data set, if you put enough information in a data set, you can, you can make any argument you want with it and, st and find the data to justify it. A lot of the respondents and, are, aren't in FERCOG's area. We're getting from all over the state. And, uh, you know, I, the, I, it, if, if, if you take that, that FERCOG study, I, I can make an, you, can make, you can make a legit argument that every salary in town needs to be doubled. And you can make a legit argument that every every salary in town should be cut by five ten percent. Just give it to me. I'll give. I can make that argument in fifteen minutes for all the whatever. It's th those aren't adequate basis for, to so make what our decision. So what do you consider? Because at this point, it speaks for itself. We can't hire people and retain them because first of all, no one's interested. A and B. If they do, they leave. And you know, I I, I think that that's one part but not the defining part it's not and, um I, I i you know how many candidates are we getting because that takes that would take away the um that's that not theory. even the issue either if you're defining that by how many people submit applications it's a separate question about how many people are actually interested and in make inquiries of current employees or um or how many people make inquiries <coughs> town-wide and, and, and then are dissuaded. So that um, happens in every town is what you're saying, why all these other towns can't find help either when their rate is low. You're saying that it's the employees that are the problem? No, I'm saying that I'm not willing to, in this public setting, setting make answer that question directly because I don't really want to say hurtful stuff. Okay. Um, and it's but I'm not, saying it's not that in every town that um, has having, which most towns around have an opening. So you're saying every town has that same issue. And towns have openings whether they're at the top of the pay scale or not the top, but that whether they're true. at the bottom, whether 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 that when, when they're right around our pay scale, when they're less than us, and when they're more than us. So I, you, I, you need to maybe you should talk to the town of the select board in um, town of Windsor, which is a very small town, less than 800 people. They. They don't have a highway, right? Isn't that hmm? the one that they don't even have a highway department anymore? <laughs> oh, no, they do. Okay. They do. They, two, three right years ago, right three the years ago, the they raised their... Didn't get blown um, away. They don't get any roads. They don't get any roads. They don't get any roads. They don't get Immediately, they got two really qualified people in town, and they're very happy to be there, but they couldn't afford to work for the town at the rate that they had before. Them stories are all over the place with mm -hmm. these superintendents. So as long I, as I, I don't the town that. isn't willing to have pay for people to come work, because the private world is so lacking of help that their great is people can go work there. And now most private in, uh, companies have at least as good of benefits or better than the town is offering. Unfortunately, the town used to have 
very good benefits, which is why people work for the towns. Them are slipping compared to the private world. We still offer better health insurance than the private companies do by a lot. I don't believe it. You talk to you talk to anybody that works for these big companies, all states or any of them, they have hundred percent insurance coverage. Good insurance. Uh, and Am I right? Yeah, and also a lot of towns are paying 75% of the uh, health insurance. I looked at this, for Cox, salaries are going to be prevalent. That's what we're at. No, we're 70%. Not. 70. But we, didn't, we used to be one of the few ones that were 70. It wasn't too many. I know. Over 70. Exactly. You said they've gone up? Oh, yeah. To attract. Folks. Now, the dollar, amount, the agree, dollar right? amount to increase that, that so you, you carry all the schools with you then. So, like that's What's the schools got to do? They have contracts. Do you yeah, want uh, the highway department to have um, the, con the the school the 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 the, the copay and everything in that that is one of the toughest issues. Every year they want um, the, the, there's so much you know they they want it, they want to be they want, be, they want their copay to be brought up to what Frontier is because Frontier is eighty twenty. Mm. Um, the towns the four towns all have different numbers. Yeah, and 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 it's not part. It's not. It's not. It cannot be contractually bargained. It's just. It's. It, if they're a town employee, that's what they get. But if we increase that number, the health insurance number, that goes to all town employees, and um, there's that. That's a big number then, because that's all of our school employees. Right. right. Yeah. Which that part isn't on the school budget. Yeah, that's on a different budget. That's on the town. That's, that's another that's line the town from the town. That's yeah. it. Besides the school, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. in the grammar school, it's not on the school budget. For Frontier, it is. Frontier town. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Frontier are not town employees. Not our town. Right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're their own yeah. independent thing. But um, by the way, do you know how many kids from town go to the elementary school? Kids that live in town. You're on the committee. I just wonder if you know. Um, I, we have. If I you think, don't, that's fine. Okay, yeah. we have like a hundred and. I get like a hundred and twelve overall. Oh. And we have thirty-six school choice. The, okay, because I know we were headed for eighty. I was wondering if we're below it. No. So we're right around. There. Yeah, pre-K and kindergarten are booming. We've had like a the, the, all the all the people moving in are all but little ones hmm. and the school choice we're having to say no the school choice well, i was meaning the kids that are in town yeah yeah thank you no it's, it's waitley that's in deep trouble but um with the number of kids in town not mm. us um but you know th this like i don't i don't know what the rest of this is good you know but the, as a department last year was a 50 percent increase in your operating budget, what like, wasn't it? No, not overall. In the uh, gravel and stone and all that. Like uh, an overall numbers. overall department budget was an increase. Yeah. Of no, just in that particular those particular line items for the material. Was, nothing what, was what, over. What, nothing was fifty percent. What was the overall increase from last year uh, from the year to right up there? Yeah. Right there. No, no, not just for this. No, portion there's, of it. There it is. Fiscal year five seventy three to six sixty one. Yeah. No, that's this is just the salary item. No, this is the entire department. Yeah, right yeah. down the bottom. Yeah, the contract materials. Where did you want it contracted? Oh, we're, we're going over last. Look, the percentage increase for fiscal last year twenty four. Well, the materials year went up thirty five thousand. Okay, yeah, my budget increase. went up. Yeah, materials was a bigger thirty thousand one hundred one thirty one hundred dollars. Yeah. Thirty-five, yeah, thirty-one thousand dollars. All right, can, can you show fiscal year twenty-two? Fiscal twenty-two, the to bottom line was five hundred and sixty thousand eight hundred and seventy-three. Yeah. Uh, Phil, yeah, Roy, I, I just like to to say that I think that it's uh, silly. Uh, to not recognize what is happening out there in the marketplace. Um, 
I think Ron is exposed to the via his employees as to really he's not making this stuff up um, and the reality is that companies around here anyway and lots of other places are hard pressed to find help and they're 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 competing for for a, a, uh, a small pool of labor so I would say I mean I don't think we should be beating anybody up over over their pay requests um, you know it's not like uh, I, I do think in Ron's case we are missing maybe I maybe it exists somewhere you know Ron is a, a working super uh, a working manager right he's managing a department and at times he's getting on the line and working along with the employees in my mind anyway um, that working with the employees part absolutely should be overtime should be part of that uh, and the uh, the other the other part it should be adequately if none of the department heads is, is Veronique incur overtime probably not um, uh, okay so not um, so he should be paid a, a, a commensurate salary supervisory salary that um, well it, it, it has to include the 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 extra hours that are put in in the winter time and um, it doesn't it doesn't have to be accounted for separately but it should be built into that and this is in my mind uh, I, I think it's silly the highway department in particular these days with the cost of everything the uh, the financial responsibility that is on that department and my and and the public work the health and the, all the public aspects of it it's it's a you know I don't think that I, I do think we can't afford what the job really should pay but you know we really should look hard and not dismiss this in, in my mind anyway <coughs> i don't think we should dismiss the pay increases but i'm with phil on being fiscally responsible about overtime for a super because it's not going to be the same rate as a laborer you know so time and a half for somebody who makes far more than a laborer adds up quickly no, no, a, no, 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 this has nothing, it. because if he's, if, if Ron is working, say, say he's working on average 50 hours a week, or 52 hours a week, and 25 of those are on the line, and the remainder is as a supervisor, well, you you should, then he should be the supervisory part of, uh, excuse me, supervisor slash department head, that part should be uh, proportional. Okay, where you know if he's if he's really three fifths supervisor and two fifths on the line, well then figure it out and pay it in that in that manner. I don't, think I don't know do what that, the right? breakdown is. Yeah, I, is, like if, is this, if he has a salary, you can't you can't say oh Ron's doing overtime, but he's doing labor right. He's in a truck plowing. Cor correct. I don't know how you would split that out. However, okay. I should point out as Ron mentioned earlier. The overtime is not in this budget. The overtime is in snow and ice because that's what he's required to do. He doesn't have a choice about that. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, I, mean, I, the just, thought, I think uh, it's, uh, it's tricky yeah. here. But the thought of the personnel committee I, is that you know, we have continual uh, situations being understaffed in the highway department, and it's kind of a Mobius strip. We go from one to the next, and that one has to overfunction which causes things to go out of whack in terms of then say, well, he really is entitled to overtime. We have crises that come up, which, you know, that's separate. However, it's one person who has to bear all that burden. And then uh, we have, don't have the proper staffing and how to break out of that cycle because it's not sustainable. It's just not. All right, so can, can you back to the what we were on before? The Either is the amount of taxes. What's, what's the note next to... <clears throat> um, no, no, no. Uh, I can't see it because oh. the, the block, the the block that's the rental. The rental. Let's talk about that. Because this right here. I'm a, I've Going been down, able to buy a chipper, and we've been approved to buy a um, used boom lift. Them were added into last year's budget for rentals, and that's number has come down 
um, and from 39,000 to 15,000. down the line. Uh, contracted services is staying the same at twenty-five thousand. You want me to hide, can I hide those columns again just so I can oh, thank you. materials is staying the same at one hundred and fifty thousand which was increased last year because of cost. Costs are still going up on materials on and I don't know where we're going to be for the coming year because we have a bid stuff that's all getting prepared now to go out to bid. Um, fuel lowered that a little bit. The fuel has come down a little bit, but what I'm hearing right now is that it may not be down for very long. Has an election year. <laughs> yeah, election year it always goes down. Let's head it back Not up. if you don't want the guy. You can go up. <laughs> Russians got oil. Saudis got oil. They want the Trumpster. <laughs> See four bucks. Office supplies is staying the same at six thousand. Uh, other supply. Oh, um, yeah. Other supplies is twelve thousand, which is supplies for the shop. Um, that kind of thing. Um, maintenance and repairs. I've added ten thousand to the, so it's seventy thousand just because everything tires, even just regular motor oil and hydraulic oils are going crazy. With Ron, the year before the big number seventy nine thousand. Was there one or two things that was a good chunk of that, or was it just a whole lot of stuff? A whole lot of stuff. Yeah. It's helped, the, the new trucks have really made a big impact on me. But now with tires and all that stuff, yeah. um, I, half the time you, you go to, you can't even shop around for tires because nobody can has them. So you gotta go where yeah. somebody has them and you know what they do when they know it. Yeah. yeah. There aren't as many options in Franklin County as there used to be. Oh, we go way further than Franklin County to try to find stuff. I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, uniforms, that's $500 an employee. That's what that's based on. That's been like that since I've been here since 2010. I don't know how long before that. Um, and new equipment, $5,000 added to last year's budget for a total of 15000 That covers chainsaws and all our small equipment that we use a lot of. And the way things are now, it's, um, they're not made real well to last. Charge you more, give you less. Well, the other <laughs> thing we've been doing is we've been doing going to electric tools, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, chainsaws and pole mm -hmm. saws. And it really has made a big difference, mm -hmm. but they're so expensive. And, mm -hmm. you know, the batteries are like $400 a pop, and, and you need a lot of them if you're using them all the time. Can't leave them out cold. Keep them inside until you need them, but... Um, yes, okay. but they, they, everybody loves the electric tools. Yeah, the batteries are getting better. Quiet, they're, um, they, they're not running when you don't need them. Yeah. So that totals my budget at 331000 which is about $11,000 less than last year's. Yep. Or this current year, I should say. Any questions? We don't have Tom or Roy. Any questions on, on the IOA operating budget? Mm. 
What, what were the two, the, the two capital items that were denied last year at town meeting? What were they again? The, the skid steer is one of them. The skid steer and the dump truck. No, well, the, the pickup. The pickup. Pick yeah. What were the two, what would the impact on your budget have been if those had been approved? Um, pretty big. Um, still having trouble with the pickup. I haven't had that at all. We've had issues with it all summer, which is why I do I have rental for the summer. Um, because of the issues with the pickup and we needed something to pull the we had to move the excavator and stuff with, with the trailer. And then uh it's steer that spent most of the summer not operating because it had an issue that they finally figured out except for we've been using it for Two weeks now, and that issue is coming back, where it just locks up. No, brakes and hydraulics didn't shut off, and you're stuck right wherever you are. And they can't seem to find the problem. They thought maybe they did. They did something, because it definitely was um, good for a couple of weeks. But that's kind of the way that whole thing's been going with that machine pretty much right along since we probably about well, five years now. It's a very unreliable something. I mean, last last winter we was working on Graves Road and it died in the middle of the road and couldn't move it. And, um, had to go over with a loader and drag it out of the way. And, but it, if you don't have it there, cars are, can't get by. And it's not, not a, not a way to operate, knowing that there's an issue with it. And any contractor would have dumped this machine a long time ago. I just heard that sand will be going up a lot. People are stealing sand from beaches now. Contractors are getting so scarce and the prices are so high. You, you yeah. let residents come and take. Oh, I'm talking about contractors. We, we're not going to do that, but the price of sand is going up. And we'll continue to go up. So we have it level funded. Oh, you're on. Oh, I Keep our fingers crossed. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Winter. Yeah. Okay. Winter. 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 We're in the snow. And the winter budget. Yeah, I've, I've heard it, that they're stealing it from beaches because it yeah. sand is actually in scarce. Oh, yeah. The concrete and everything else that it gets used for. It's, yeah. We use a lot of um, stone in our sand because we found that. Um, Traction-wise, the stone is way better, plus it's better for the road. Sand is a sponge for mud season. Oh, yeah. And we found that we actually been doing pretty well with mud season, you know, not having a whole lot of mud season like other towns around. But, and I, it has a lot to do with what we use for material on our gravel roads mm -hmm. and then what we use in the wintertime. Um, yeah, the only change, let's see, on this one is the salary, the uh, overtime. Well, I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, it's the overtime pay. That joke. That was based on the $27 an hour, all the pay increases. Um, and then over time for my salary. And that was figured 150 hours, which over the last, um, uh, I think I went back six, seven years and that was an average. We've had a few that were a lot more, but average was about 150 hours a year. So this increase is, a, is about uh, the OT after the 45 hours? Is yes. that that? Yes. Is that basically that?
Any questions? Board, we have any, any comments, questions, suggestions? No, no I'm not sure. I don't have anything uh, regarding the supplies here. So we're coming out of the dentist office with the uh, with, with the with the uh, root canal estimate. Oh, geez, I had two last summer. <laughs> 3,400 3, hundred bucks, and I said, thirty four hundred bucks would have got me to new math for more than two years when I was there. Holy cow! I took an hour. In a couple of meetings, we'll be seeing the Article 2 mock up and how it all kind of plays out. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And then there hasn't been a discussion of Coldy yet either. So. <laughs> and this is what hurts that discussion. This, the, the, this, mm -hmm. It does. When the numbers of the increase in this are so high, there's less to give to that. When, yeah, one department, when, one, when one department sucks up to a big percentage increase, yeah. it, well, the that, that, that prevents our ability the, uh, to, to, to yeah, be generous to all. So yeah. what do you King Kong, King Kong and the Little Kong, you know, the grammar school and the highway department. So that's it. That's exactly it. So what do you recommend to do about getting quality help? Because without, I mean, this budget don't mean nothing if we don't have help because you're not going to spend the money. Right. Well, just, but, so just, go, just go to once a week maintenance on the roads, Rock. And you're going to handle the complaints. We are. Sure, sure. sure. We're going to hire a bodyguard. <laughs> I mean, I you, you asked me that question. And, you know, honestly, Ron, I would say treat your employees such that when somebody asks them whether this is a good place to work or not, they say yes instead of no. That's what I would okay. say. So you're basing it on somebody that has worked a few months. That was not... Um, can't say. Yeah. I know it, it just you know. It, uh, but you, it's it's not it's not one person, Ron. It's like years of talking to people, and it's just you so know, since I've been and, here, and, and it's always the same thing. Ron yells. Ron Ron yells at us. You Ron know, just I, yells all the I, time. I, yeah. But you asked. I did. This is and this is it. It's not. What do you call me. yelling? This. What. Well, uh, I, I don't think this is relevant to, to the, yeah, yeah, somewhere else. Yeah. But but this is the thing. This is the thing. It's it's always okay to for, to, to make the argument that it's one thing, and then it, you know, uh, but but and, and you know, but but to, to 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 say there's a counterfactual narrative out there is, it, you know, is it, discounted. It's 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 you know, no, it's just no, and. So this this is the thing. Like if we're gonna if you're gonna actually say all the time it's it's money, it's money, it's money, when there's a counterfactual narrative, then like how how do we address this? I, uh, not an open session. I, it, no. Employee I, employee I, I, I think you're you're it, going off. Employee off, performance off. is a perfectly appropriate it, for uh, for open session. This is not it is, it is. And employee no, performance I, is a two sided I coin. Don't, is a two-sided coin. No, I, I, as your town administrator, I would recommend I, we halt this part of the conversation. This is a meeting with the finance committee. That's what this meeting is about, right? To look at the coherency of the numbers, or what, you know, ask questions about where the numbers are coming from. Not over, not what you, where you're going from. Yeah. I don't think so. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I think this is just, you know, that this is not. That's not the right place for it. I'm already depressed enough talking about this hiring budget. It's nothing because of Ron. It's 
a lot of the increases are in the market and it's beyond their control. Look, I think this is very frustrating. I understand there are people on fixed incomes or nearly fixed incomes. This is, a, this is an impossible situation. Well, we can't solve it here. You know, I, yeah, we could solve it by uh, let's not maintain the roads, okay? Let's cut back 30% on our road maintenance. And we can explain it to the people who live in town that we're trying to not, we're trying to hold the line on our taxes. Uh, but I, I don't think that's going to cut it. I don't have the, I don't have the good answers, but I think the issue is bigger than just the highway department and the, and the specifics of the, of the highway department. I really do. Uh, it's, I mean, I see, go, go see what it costs to, to, uh, to do anything these days. Okay, make a, you know, you're going to make a wedding. Young people are going to make a wedding. They're spending like 20% more, no, I'm sorry, 50% more than it cost them, I don't know, six years ago. Something like that. I mean, any, anything with a human component, anything with a food component is, um, you know, it's, 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 the sky's the limit almost these days. But it's, it's all we are, all we can do is compete in the marketplace for these things and not, we can't try and set prices. It, it doesn't work that way. Anyway. We could save a lot of money. Start telling the town homeschool. Okay, that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. You want to go homeschool everybody? Fine, let's do away with the public school. Let's see if the Commonwealth lets us do away with the public school. <laughs> He's being facetious, but all right. <laughs> I mean, come on. That would be illegal. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying in my beer here, really. This is, everybody, everybody's hurting with this situation. Nobody is. No, nobody's hurting. Thank you, Roy. I mean, I thought it was, we'll see the budget here when we have to we'll look at Article 2 in its entirety. Maybe between now and then, somebody would have honor it. Like the town of Ashfield got a, one of the original copies of the Declaration of Independence and sold it at Sotheby's for $600,000. Maybe someone will find a big gold nugget in one of those big piles of gravel. Uh, well, I, I, honestly, I think it's very useful that uh, and very neat for, it gets this prepared where we actually, when we come time for uh, all this stuff and we see, well, these are the salaries, okay, here's what the percent, because really, you know, you're not talking, the amount of, of control that we have over this is really, uh, you know, it's not that great. It's not, it would be wonderful if we could think that, oh, we could find a highway department that's going to work with twice the efficiency of this department. It's going to require half the employees. Oh, and by the way, the superintendent's going to get paid half. I mean, no, it's just, it's unreal. It doesn't exist. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Phil, you're in a you're in a state of mind today. I'm in a state of mind also. No, it's, the, thing that, the thing that we don't consider though is that it is okay when you cannot afford current levels of services to reduce the levels of services. And yeah. there, there's a difference between reducing level of service and just you know you, you exactly when we say oh we're just not going to do it you know but you, potholes can stay potholes longer. Um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You can you can do that. That's a legitimate thing to do, rather than just be hell bent on de keeping the same or better level of service and just paying more and more and more. Like, um, I don't and, and, think, and, I don't do, and, and I don't most of the towns that. near the the reason when we drive uh, when you drive out of town and you immediately you know need a kidney belt for your to, to stay in your front seat of your car is because those towns, a lot of those towns have made those decisions to, you know, yeah. and, and that we should, you know, it is, you know, basically the highway department is really the only department that we can significantly balance the budget with. It's the only department with, huh. where, where the number, it, it's true, like, it, that's just a true <coughs> statement. It's, uh, the, the, in terms of lowering the level of services to, 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 keep budget numbers in line. It's the only department that has a big enough budget impact that we can, th well, that you can do that with. Transportation is up there now, yeah. but you know, and, and that's true. But I, I, uh, you know, I would be, 
I'd be hard pressed to believe that if we say we decided we're just going to cut the highway department by 25 percent, I think we'd have to be very honest at town meeting that we're not going to be fixing potholes and you are going to need, you know, like extra airbags in your car or whatever because we made, I mean, we have to be very honest that we are going to cut the level of service that you come to expect. And yes, I don't think that would lack of new growth. We're already covered, essentially, already are cutting services. Yeah. Yes, we are because we're not we're keeping them. Even though now. the state wants that's us to do more with the highway department with the tree issue, you know, mm -hmm. so, and that's something that's beyond our control. Even Chapter 90 money. When I started in 2013, the town was receiving $270,000 for Chapter 90. It's now 261000 yeah. uh, 10 yeah. years later, yeah. 11 years later. It's, it's, and if you look at the cost of everything, we're, we're getting like a quarter of what we did 11 yeah, years ago. Of course. It's coming down on us, on the property owners right now. If the state had increased their income taxes, maybe we wouldn't be having this discussion because your chapter 90 money would be, you know, 350000 or whatever. So, so uh, I mean, that is where the problem is, and that's yeah. why it's uh, it's so difficult, and I, I I don't know that the average uh, uh, resident resident or pro you know property owner actually even you know realizes this, but that's I don't think know. anyone does because I still haven't figured out how the Desi formula works. <laughs> it's like uh, the people who fix the price for milk every month out in Wisconsin. What are, who are these two? What do they do? I think. Uh, Roy brought up a very good point. We should continue that conversation over and over again. We should. Yeah. Cut services. When we want to save money, let's cut some services. Well, That's well, the only way you yeah. spend less money. So well, it goes down. Well, before you cut it, you have to, you, you can propose it to the town. But what I started to say is the other towns that Ron Ref or that uh, Phil reference where you drive and it's like, oh my. You know, they have either intentionally by design or not by design, they've cut services. If you cut or you don't fund your highway department to the, uh, yeah. to the yeah. to level that it needs, that's what you're going to get. Yeah, there's an impact. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, you know, and, and there's, but there's, a, there's, a, there's a good, the, the reason that that is something that we should more seriously consider, though, is because um, that, that would help, that would help get highway budgets passed and capital and highway capital requests passed and we have a real problem in that area um, and you know and that's something I, I know that what, what I'm hearing now is that the current plan is to stay away from capital requests and to try to do more free cash requests and you know where, where there's just a, 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 um, a simple majority instead of two-thirds um, and you know that's a that's a really bad idea um, it is it is if, if i may there is the bill out there right now that if it passes will change the capital stabilization to be a simple majority instead of two-thirds and just so you're aware and that you know that's that's how you know it'll never pass because anything that helps us never passes but um but there's, a, there's but, also but, a bill out there that uh, will increase the excise tax that uh, we collect. Yeah, I'm sure they'll do that. <laughs> well, they'll give, us, they'll give the town the option yeah. to do that if um, the town wishes to create. But you know that the, when when you when, 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 like this, something that we really need to work on is presentation of these things at town meeting rehearsal, and when when you when you look at when you rewatch town meeting. These these were missed opportunities. The, the votes were there. You could have gotten them, oh, no, yeah. and 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 they, the presentation was not adequate. The, it wasn't. The, the attempt to persuade was not adequate. Well, we finally have a capital improvements uh, co committee that's standing and meets and actually does things. That's a big improvement right there. Mm -hmm. It's up to five people want to volunteer and, and go up there and take the heat. This is not exactly the way to run well, it, it you know, people. Um, By asking for money, <laughs> or saying no. It, it, it's it's hard it's uh, it's it's hard for people that don't enjoy speaking in public to have to really carry the water, yeah. um, and you know, yeah. I, 
and I've said this to you in the past, like <coughs> rehearsal would really help. Rehearsal would really help. Well, and it's not going to be wrong, though. It's going to be the capital. But yeah. ult ultimately, there's questions that only he can answer, and it ultimately, it's up to him. It is. Um, yeah. And uh, this year is going to be worse than last year. Just letting you know. So, so uh, we have nothing on that. <laughs> so table that's here. For the personnel committee, um, since they just had their first meeting, was it just last night? Last yes. night, um, we were going to review the personnel committee budget again. Do you want to do that on the eleventh? Yeah. Next regular good. meeting. Okay. Right. Stick it on there. It's going to be the largest percentage increase of any item uh, in the budget. <laughs> Tell you, fifteen hundred percent. When's the next meeting? Next month? Yeah. The, yeah, the next regular meeting is on March 11th because on the 5th everybody's going to the budget. That's um, right, March 5th. School budget. Down to Frontier Region Media Education. Did you hear that, Roy? Next meeting, ne next week's meeting is going to be down at the Media Room Education Center Room of the Frontier Regional School, 6 o'clock in uh, South Deerfield. Tuesday, though, right? Tuesday. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Tuesday, Election Day. And, uh, March 11th is the next cycle of the budget discussion for the town of Conway here at Town Hall. Thank you, Vernon. And I don't know, Vernon, did, did Frontier send you all the, the, the proposed budget to, for, to disseminate? Yeah, I think I already sent that out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. I hope if I, I hope I everybody. Well, let me just make it up to redo it just in case. It'll be an interesting meeting next next Tuesday. So I'm sorry, March 11th. We got a school meeting. budget. When is the budget? School budget. Meeting? That's no, that's, that's the that's grammar school. That's the grammar school. Yeah. Correct. Because that's down on our agenda as next regular meeting. Right. Yeah. Well, you then dismiss this. But that's. It says Tuesday, March 5th at Frontier. Next regular meeting, March 11th. Right, March 11th is the grammar school budget year. Right. You're going to miss two meetings in a row going over the budget schedule? Did you eat something? <laughs> I'm just letting you know that March 11th is the grammar school yeah, budget year. Okay, well, be the 12th, yeah, you, you should meet. Yeah, you, yeah no, you'll have to decide if you want to change the date because I didn't bring the budget schedule with me. But um, So it's at 5. What if we are, we are we able to meet at the school? On the 11th. On the, yeah. I can meet, yeah. Because the budget review at grammar starts at five, right? Hopefully it's done by six. Oh, can we, can we do the owl up there, or is that necessary? They have an owl. Oh, my goodness. Well, they have an owl, but they're going to be using it for their meeting, are yeah. they not? So. Um, is there enough bandwidth in the <laughs> two owls going on? Yeah, not really. I'm trying to remember what we did last year, because we everybody attended last year. Yeah. Maybe it was a different night. Do you guys want to meet on the 12th instead? I can do the 12th. I can't do the 13th. Either one of them, I won't be here. Not going to be here the 12th. I can do the 12th. The 12th, I can do the 12th. 12th, yes. Roy, can you meet March 12th? That's a Tuesday rather than a Monday. Right? Uh, I, I should be able to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 So we have a whole week to recover from the uh, fireworks down there. For this week. You can imagine the cast of characters already assembled. There's a there's a couple. Oh, yeah. There's a couple that always bring it. Well, All right. I make a motion to adjourn the finance committee. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.